When you build and deploy AI agents with Agent Force, you want to be sure that sensitive data isn't accessible to anyone who shouldn't be able to view or modify it. And Salesforce's powerful permission settings let you control what your users and your AI agents can do. So let's explore how permissions work in Agent Force. When you create an AI agent, the agent can interact with your employees or customers. If the AI agent is connected to employee channels and interacts with Salesforce users, typically the agent runs in the context of the currently logged in user. The Salesforce access controls that you already have in place, such as licenses, permissions, field level security, and sharing settings, determine what each user can access. But many AI agents, including service agents connected to customer channels, operate as a Salesforce user in your organization. The agent user has a dedicated user record and profile in Salesforce. The actions that the AI agent can take depend on the permissions its user is assigned. When you build a customer-facing agent with AgentForce, you can automatically create a new agent user that's associated with the agent. By default, that user has a limited set of permissions. As you set up your agent, it's your responsibility to grant the agent user the specific permissions it needs to do its work, such as viewing and editing objects. And whenever you iterate on the agent by creating new agent actions, you must also update the agent user's permissions. If you don't, the agent doesn't function properly. By managing the permissions for your agent, you can prioritize trust and security, ensuring that the agent doesn't share or modify data unless it's explicitly allowed. Let's dive into Salesforce Setup to demonstrate how you can manage the permissions for an AI agent so that you can be sure that the agent is acting securely. We use a service agent for this example, but the basic process is the same for other types of agents. Let's start by going over how the agent user is created. When you build a new service agent with the agent creator, you can select the agent user for the agent. It's best to leave the default selection, new agent user, so that a new agent user with minimal access is created for the agent. Let's go ahead and exit out of the agent creator and return to the agents page in setup. After creating an agent and the agent user, how do you manage its user permissions? The same way you manage other Salesforce users from the users page in setup. But before we can look up the account of the agent user, we need to know its name. If you're not sure what the name of your agent is, you can find that information in AgentForce. Here, we're looking at the agent's page and setup, so we can simply click the name of our service agent to view its details. On the Details tab, we see that the name of the agent user is Einstein Service Agent User. Now we can check out the permissions assigned to that user by navigating to the user's page and setup, and then by clicking the name of the user. And there it is, Einstein Service Agent User. If you're new to user management in Salesforce, before you update any permission settings, we encourage you to review Manage Users and Data Access in Salesforce Help. On the user record, the first thing to check is the user's role. Make sure that you assign the agent a role that provides sufficient access for your use case. For example, if you want your AI agent to update cases, the assigned role must have the ability to view and modify case records. Now let's look at the permissions. By default, the agent user is assigned a few permission sets. Be sure to check out each permission set and review the included permissions. There's also a permission set group assigned to the agent user. To get an overview of the permission set group, click its name and then click View Summary. External agents typically require additional permission sets to function properly. When deciding what to give your agent access to, follow the principle of least privilege. The permission sets for AI agents can vary by use case, but include these for service agents. Agent for service agent user, data cloud user, and prompt template user. Next, let's look at the object permissions. Whenever you create a new agent action for your agent, whether it's based on a flow, Apex class, or prompt template, be sure to grant the necessary level of object permissions for every object the action interacts with. The same goes for field permissions. Your agent user is unlikely to automatically have access to all the permissions required for the agent to do its job. 
so you can create a new permission set with all the necessary access and then assign that new permission set to the agent user. And remember, if you create a new permission set, associate it with the Einstein agent license. The last step is to address the security for any flows and Apex classes used by your agent. Always debug a flow by running it as the agent user to see permission issues that you possibly overlooked. For Apex, extend the security for any Apex class used by an agent to the agent user's profile. And that's it. Now you understand how to manage the permissions for an AI agent in Salesforce. Keep in mind that when you're configuring the permissions, you probably won't get it right the first time. So it's a good idea to test the security controls in your sandbox when you're building and prototyping your agent. To dive deeper into agent permissions, search for best practices for agent user permissions in Salesforce Help.